beyond any doubt it's both. You cannot claim to be a sustainable and responsible investor if you have not embedded sustainability into your corporate culture, in your strategy and your way of doing business. It's a matter of uh, credibility and integrity, it's walk the talk and that's what Canem has been doing for the last 25 years and will keep on doing. When you look at sustainable and responsible investing, Canem has nearly 90 billion in assets that integrate sustainability into their investment strategy. That means using capital as a lever to promote uh, sustainable economic development. But let, you let me give you a more interesting uh, example on Canem as a responsible enterprise. Part of the managed fees that we receive from our clients on our sustainable investments are being used to finance the Canem Institute on Sustainable Development. It is an independent institute that has two main goals. First of all, foster learning through financing groundbreaking academic research on sustainable economic development and investing. And then secondly and most importantly, philanthropy. So we provide financial support to charity projects that have focus on social issues like inclusion, financial inclusion, but also on environmental issues like reforestation. What is so unique about Candom's sustainability approach is that it has stood and it will stand the test of time thanks to its innovative ESG approach. For over a decade, the centerpiece of uh, Canem sustainability analysis is our business activity analysis. That part tries to address a key question. What type of products or services does a company sell and how do those contribute, positively or negatively, to sustainable economic development and how does it try to address sustainable challenges like climate change, circular economy and waste, but also health and wellness. This part has really set us apart in the investment community. A second layer of that analysis is obviously, apart from the what, is also how. How does a company interact with and manage its stakeholders? And then we're really talking about stakeholders like clients, customers, employees, investors, and even society. That is a very important part of how we analyze and assess companies. And then a third layer I would say is actually a little bit back to the days where it all started, is really looking at are companies involved in controversial activities? If so, we will divest or we will exclude them. And obviously, are companies also involved in controversies? If so, we will divest from these type of companies. So three important building blocks that try to actually capture both the risks and opportunities we see in the market. Well, we've seen an enormous evolution over the last 25 years, without any doubt. But it went actually from niche, when Canada actually started also back in the days, uh, to more mainstream. Niche, what do I mean? Well, it was a very small part of the market and these type of investments was more about aligning it with your values, your personal principles, so more ethical, moral types of investments. Now, from niche to mainstream, I would say, well, at least in marketing mainstream, it's a little bit more industrialized, I would say, with a focus on screening, on integrating environmental, social, and governance issues into your investment strategies. So, a little bit more about materiality of sustainability and the impact it has on your investments. I would love to have a crystal ball, but unfortunately I don't know what's actually going to happen. But I know one thing for sure is that when it relates to sustainability in our society and our economy, there are a lot of moving parts and it's accelerating. Who would have thought only two years ago that China would commit to a net zero emission economy by 2060? It's an enormous shift in the mindset of people and investors across the world. But what I know for sure is that we're only at the start there's still a marathon to be run. If you look at the European Union, it has that clear objective of decarbonizing our economy, making it more circular and more inclusive. And that will create massive risk for certain sectors and companies operating in those sectors. However, on the other hand, the European Union is determined. They will fire on all cylinders, they will put money on the table. So I believe that the Green Deal that they are setting up will also create enormous opportunities for those investors that are focused on sustainability, that are focused on those companies that enable that transition and that embrace 
uh, that energy transition and that more sustainable economy. So in the end, the next 25 years will be about more active, more impact, more engagement and more focus on environmental and social issues. Well, first of all, we all need to look in the mirror. So start with changing your day-to-day -day behavior and try to live a more sustainable life. Buy more circular products, use more public transport, buy renewable energy. That change in lifestyle, I can tell you that it's not easy. It requires determination, perseverance, but it's required and at some point it will need to happen for your kids, for our society, for our economy. When it relates to your investments, think out of the box, be inquisitive, try not to accept the easy, normal solution because most often it does not contribute to a sustainable society. You really need to align your investments with your personal values and try to contribute by investing in companies that offer solutions to those sustainability challenges. But most importantly, be an enlightened investor that has a conviction that the money you use for investments can make a difference.